Welcome to Handmade by Ditsy Tulip, I'm Mal and thanks for stopping by. In today's video I'm going to share with you my latest make, which is a project that's taken me more than 30 hours. So if you're interested in seeing what that is, then do stay tuned. Lovely starshine lights my way to bed. Magic rainbows glisten in my head. Just like a child I live in wonderland. All my dreams are coming. Okay, so what have I been making then? my first proper quilt. When I say proper, I mean um, kind of a, a large size um, quilt that has been properly planned out with all the fabrics carefully selected and following a pattern. It's absolutely huge so I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to show you the full thing but I'll show you what I can. it's freezing in here so it's quite nice to have this uh, sitting on my lap um, so yes this um, has been really keeping me busy through the latest lockdown um, the fabrics that I've used the patterned fabrics are all Liberty of London uh, quilting cotton so they're not torn alone they are the quilting cottons and then I've combined it with some plain fabrics and then the back is just plain white and the binding is like a pink polka dot. Um, the pattern that I followed is a free quilt pattern that's available on Tilda's, Tilda's World, I think it's called, dot com. There's loads and loads of free stuff on there. I didn't realise there was so much um, that's, that's free. What I'll do in a second is head over to um, show you the website and which pattern that I followed. Um, I chose a simple one because it was one of my kind of first attempts at doing a, a, a machine piece to quilt um, but I'd definitely like to try some of the more complicated ones. In fact let's head over there now I'm going to um, go over to the Tilda World website and um, show you what the patterns are and which one I've used. Okay so here I am on tildersworld.com um, yeah, loads of different stuff on this website, but what we're going to look at is the free patterns. So I'm just going to click on free patterns. And then there's a variety of different quilts and pillows and even some kind of little angels and things like that. So definitely have a look through. Um, you can see it tells you what the finished size is and it also tells you how difficult it is, whether it's uh, moderate, uh, challenging or trying to see what the simplest one is I think it might be easy um so yeah definitely have a look through there's loads of different projects I'm going to show you the one that I've made if I can find it oh look at that little mouse it's so cute I think it's right near the bottom somewhere the one that I've done yeah here you go so this is the quilt that I've made I've not used um, Tilda fabric I've used the Liberty fabrics uh, because I couldn't really find anywhere that stocked a good variety of the Tilda fabric um, but you can see it tells you exactly what fabrics you need how much quantity you need to buy of each one the finish size is 51 inches by 76 and a quarter inches. It then kind of numbers each of the fabrics, which was quite important. And I'll show you um, when I show you some of my behind the scenes stuff, I'll show you what I did with that information. It then shows you a quilt layout, tells you what you need to cut out. how to piece rows together and then you've got an overall layout of the quilt so you can um, kind of prepare what pieces you're putting together for which rows. Then shows you how to trim the edges and then just walks you through quilting. That's obviously the Tilda fabrics that have been used 
Um, there's two versions that are shown on here. There's the blue colours and the pink colours. So that's just telling you both of those. So that's the one that I've chosen. Okay, so the fabrics I got from my local um, haberdashery called Bibolo and um, wanted to support them with it kind of being a, 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 the lockdown and they'd had to close and could only accept online orders. Um, I wanted to kind of show my support to um, a local shop. I did have some Liberty fabrics already in my stash um, but it certainly wasn't a cheap project. With the fabrics that I needed to buy, which I didn't have in stash, the plain fabrics, the backing fabric and the batting um, for, for making it nice and cosy, it was about 66 quid, I think something like that. So definitely not um, a cheap project, but I absolutely love how this has turned out and it's keeping me nice and cosy when I'm sitting on the sofa at night. It did take about definitely at least 30 hours to make this and the reason how, how I know that is because I was watching um, Netflix and uh, Netflix shows whilst I was sewing it and I got through three seasons of a particular show so I know it was at least 30 hours um, and then the binding I hand stitched so and that I did that in the front room not in the sewing room so that'll be on top so maybe kind of 35 hours something like that that it took to make um, but it was, I really enjoyed it because it's all just kind of straight lines, so it was quite repetitive. So it was something that you could just not have to think about too much and, and, and just relax whilst you're doing it. So I really enjoyed that. What I did do is share um, a few snippets kind of behind the scenes as I was doing certain things. I didn't film the whole process because sometimes it was just too dark to be able to get any decent video. We've been at work all day and it going dark um, super early now. Um, I didn't want it to, waiting to be able to film to delay me getting on with making the quilt. So I filmed where I could, but I haven't filmed all the steps. So what I'm gonna do is just um, head over to some of those little snippets so I can show you some behind the scenes and then I'll tell you what other um, things I can about it. Okay, so I'll show you these fabrics before I start sewing them together. So you can see I've got several two and a half inch by two and a half inch squares. These are all Liberty quilting cotton. So they're not torn alone, they are kind of a, a, a quilting cotton weight. So here's the different patterns there for those. I've then got a couple of the Liberty fabrics uh, cut in the oblong so they are two and a half by four and a half inches again lovely liberty quilting cottons and then I've got some solid cottons um, like a beige colour an aqua colour and a white which are the same size as these and again these are quilting cottons And then what I've done, because the pattern I'm going to be following is a tilde pattern, um, so the kind of picture instructions that you can follow, let me just show you. So like here, the picture that you can follow has got images of the Tilda fabric on there. And because I'm not using that same fabric, what I've done is taken a photograph of my fabrics and numbered them. Um, I've then corresponded one of these fabrics with each of the numbers of the Tilda fabric. Um, and then I can follow along with the pattern, but replacing their fabric with mine. So let's get stitching these together. Just to show you a couple of other things to help me keep organised as I'm quilting. Um, as you can see here, I'm using my iPad and I'm plotting out each row. So um, what number 
fabric piece I need on each row and then as I've attached it I'm crossing it out and um, just using the apple pencil so that's just helping me to make sure that I stay on track then when I've stitched each row together I'm just putting a little label on it so I know that's row one I know uh, that's row two row three etc so when I come to press them I know I'm keeping them in the right order and then one thing I forgot to show you earlier from a sewing point of view. Let's see if I can get that to brighten up a bit. I'm using quarter inch quilting foot to help to keep even seams. So that's it. I'm going to crack on and do a few more rows. Just something else I want to point out while I'm here at the ironing board um, and that's to um, press the seams in opposite directions so you can see here so how it works is I get um, one of these rows attached to one of these rows but what I'm making sure is when I'm pressing the rows before I join them together that I press the seam allowances in opposite directions so you can see here the seam allowance is pressed that way but then here the seam allowance is pressed that way and that just ensures that when um, I join them together so you can see here's the seam line that runs along them both I don't end up with um, a, a bulk in the in the center there where they or in the cross point where they join by pressing them in those opposite directions it just means that um, you don't end up with that with that bulky area um, and then the seam allowance of the rows all kind of get pressed in the same direction so just to show you the front so you can see then if you look on the front I haven't got any kind of majorly bulky areas I am finding the pressing quite difficult because the video that um, the crafty class that I've been watching says to not use steam because you can distort the pieces and um, so I find getting a kind of nice crisp seam without any steam it's a little bit tricky um, but I will follow along with the instructions because I certainly don't want everything to get distorted okay so I'll carry on I'm just um, dropping in to tell you what I found is working well for me with the quilting and that's to work in batches of six so um, I'm currently on um, a row of the oblong pieces and you can see I've just put six together here and then what I'm doing is as I'm going I'm laying out the six pieces in the right order um, so I'll then sew them pieces together and then attach them to that. I just think six, I'm finding six is a good number to work with to keep the flow and know um, exactly what piece I'm working on next. And to also ensure that it really only takes me a few minutes at a time so that I can put it away. So what I've got here next to the sewing table is all the pieces kind of laid out and um, ready to just kind of take six out of them when I've got a couple of minutes to put some together. So yeah, that's working really well for me. Just another little thing to show you. Um, it is a little bit dark in here, so um, apologies, the lighting's a bit off. But I just wanted to show you how I'm using wonder clips rather than pins when I'm sewing the strips of the quilt together. The reason why I'm using wonder clips is it helps to keep the seam. In the right direction so I'll sew kind of right up to the edge and then remove the wonder clip and it just helps to keep the seams um, in that the right direction that you want them to go in rather than them all bunching up so now I'll carry on with another row okay I'm just going to show you um, the quilt sandwich before I move on to actually quilting this so I finished the quilt top and what I've done now is made a quilt sandwich. And all that is, is I've got the, the backing 
So the fabric backing, uh, which I placed on the floor with the wrong side facing up. And then I put four pins in each corner just to kind of keep it taut. I then put the batting on top of that. I then put the quilt top um, with the right side facing up. And then what I've done, um, if you can see, I've got loads of safety pins where I pinned through all three layers and that just keeps it in tacked, ready for when I sew. You can see they're all different safety pins. And then I've got two machines that um, are possible contenders for quilting this. I'm going to give this one a try first of all. Um, and you can see what I've had to do is kind of roll up the quilt so that this um, fits this side on the right side of the needle. I'm then going to use a walking foot and kind of start quilting it um, a little section at a time. Um, I'm, you can either do quilting with a walking foot or with um, freehand motion foot. I haven't got much experience at freehand motion, so I'm going to start off by doing the majority of quilting with the walking foot. And then I may do a few patterns and things on there um, with free motion afterwards. So there it is, ready to start quilting. I'll keep you posted with how I get on. Just sharing another quick update with you. Um, I've not far off finished the first stage of quilting on um, this quilt. Now I did have to swap to my old vintage Benina machine. The reason being on my other Genome machine, it doesn't have a sewing table. Um, so I was just finding that the quilt is just too big um, and I couldn't manage moving it about but with this machine it does have a sewing table attached to it and luckily I do have a walking foot for this one as well and um, so I've been able to switch to um, this really old but really useful machine um, and then just a couple of other things I wanted to share I've lifted um, if you've seen my other video I've got a height adjustable table and I've actually put this up quite high um, so that it's easier to kind of manoeuvre the, the, the quilt as, as I'm sewing. And then what I'm also doing, um, I have ordered some quilting gloves, which are like gloves which grip the fabric to make it easier to, to, to manoeuvre. Um, they haven't arrived yet, so I thought I'd try just with my kind of normal um, leather gloves. And that does seem to be helping, so I'm sure it'd be better with proper quilting gloves. Um, but it does seem to be helping with um, any gloves on really just to help to grip the fabric. So all I'm doing um, for the first quilt on this is I'm simply stitching in the ditch using the walking foot um, just along these long lines here. And then what I'm going to do is um, have a little go at some freehand embroidery, but I'll just really take my time. Um, doing this on the larger squares here. I'm going to have a go at maybe um, uh, freehand embroider hearts or, or something like that in these larger squares, but I don't intend on doing any other quilting on the small squares. So that's it. I just wanted to show you how I've had to swap to my vintage but trusty machine. I'm also just um, going to show you is what I'm doing every time I've stitched a row. Um, I'm just checking on the wrong side of the quilt and just checking that there's no um, kind of puckering or any bits of the fabric caught up in itself as I go along. Um, but you can see this is what it's looking like on the back. I have had a couple of times where the fabric um, must have been a bit kind of gathered underneath and then it's got caught up in the stitching so I've had to unpick it and stitch over it again but I found it's much easier to do um, before I've moved on to the next um, row of quilting so that's why I'm checking each line as I go. Just showing you an example of where the fabric can pucker up on itself. So I've just um, sewed this line and I'm just inspecting it before I move on to the next. And can you see there how the fabric has just caught up in itself? 
So what I'm going to need to do is just unpick a little bit of that stitching and sew it again. But as I say, that would have been much more difficult to fix if I'd have moved on to the next line because then it, I may not have been able to smooth the fabric out um, to, to get rid of the pucker. That's what they look like. Okay, so what I didn't show you behind the scenes then was first of all um, the quilting side of things. So um, what I've quilted is not a great deal so far. So I've just quilted along the diagonal lines and I just did that using the walking foot. It's probably easier to see on the back. Um, so that's all that's quilted so far. Now my plan is to add some fancy quilting to each of these squares that are made up of the plain fabric. I did make a start with some free motion embroidery, which again is quite new to me, but I think I'm going to unpick them and I'll explain why in a second. So I don't know if you can see, might have to show you on the reverse, but all I've done um, so far is a few hearts. I think you can just about see it there. Let me show you on the back. I think you can just about see on camera. So um, yeah, I've just kind of done a few hearts using free motion at the moment. Um, however, I've just got a second hand machine. So a new to me machine which does um, embroidery. So I think I'm going to unpick those hearts and once I've worked out how to use my machine properly, I think I'm going to add um, some kind of fancier embroidery in each of those squares. So I'll keep you posted about that. I will be doing a video about what machine I've um, had um, soon as well once I've sussed out how to work all the different things in that. Um, so, um, yeah, so for now, it's still fully usable. It is quilted, um, but just along those diagonal lines. What I also didn't show you is the binding. So I was able to get some nice mitered corners, which I was super proud of. I did just use a narrow binding and I machine stitched it on the front, but then on the back, because I wanted them to be as invisible as possible, I stitched it all by hand. And again, that worked out really well takes a long time um, but to be honest I was able to just sit there with the quilt over me keeping me warm and um, watching TV in the front room and um, sitting there hand sewing um, the, the back. I'd much rather kind of hand sewing binding I, I really struggle with the stitching in the ditch I always find it doesn't catch on the other side um, so yeah that's why I thought I would hand sew it and it just makes it a bit more invisible as well. So I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. I think I may have got the quilting bug, um, really enjoyed it and already starting to think about um, some other designs that I'd be able to work on. But I think I'll perhaps try something a little bit more complex, um, like some of those that I've just showed you over on um, Tilda World. Some of them are absolutely amazing. Um, but first of all, I want to suss out my new machine and have a go at the embroidery in the different squares. But yeah, I think um, quilting is something that I could definitely enjoy as much as making garments. And so I'll keep you posted with how I get on with other stuff. Do let me know in the comments if you do quilting and if you've got any um, good tips or good resources or anything like that that you can share, then do leave them in the comments below. Um, but other than that, have a wonderful week, whatever you're sewing, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you very soon. Bye! All my dreams are coming, all my dreams are humming, all my dreams.